The National Security Advisor, Nuri Badu, has assured residents of Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo states of security preparedness during the off-cycle elections coming up tomorrow, Saturday. The NSA warned against violence by political actors and charged security agencies to adhere to professional code of ethics during the conduct of the exercise. Ribadu further warns that a monitoring system has been established with monitors deployed to the field to collect any evidence of violence and irregularities. Joining us live to discuss this is Terence Konum, security expert and public affairs commentator. Terence, good to have you on Plus Politics. Thanks for having me and uh, good evening, Nigeria. Uh, Terence, what is your summary take of the situations in Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo? And I want you to take them individually. Well, thanks so much for having me. Pleasure. Uh, the situation on ground so far with England, because everywhere is calm at the moment. There are no tensions like during the last four seasons of elections in Manambra. So really thank God for that situation. And we hope that we achieve the level of peace we have always achieved during our off-season elections. And we have a history in this country where our off-season elections are always treated to be more peaceful and credible than our general elections. And we pray and hope that we achieve the same result tomorrow. Uh, we, it's quite important that we need peace in this country at the moment. Because the economic challenges we have already are a security threat, and the general situation in the country is tense, uh, so we shouldn't use our elections uh, to create tension in, to, in the country. Uh, so far, the, the, the deployment has been excellent uh, because we've seen the Nigerian police, the army, the civil defense, and everybody trying to do it to mobilize so that we have a peaceful election tomorrow. And so now the citizens also have a role to play by conducting themselves within the law uh, so that we're going to have a peaceful election. Uh, we know that situations in the southeast, most especially, are going to be tense because of activities of the unknown government and the, uh, and the eastern uh, uh, that we have on the ground. But we think with the security mobilization, they will be able to portray them the way they did in Anambra and in Kogi State. Uh, we have a tripartite election where three parties are contesting Chile. So obviously there is going to be tension, so the deployment will also we expect them to be in top gear to be able to control. But is a little bit calm, and so we expect it to go like that to the end. So for now, that is the assessment we have regarding security in those situations. And we encourage it to go like that to the end. Terence, uh, yeah. is it me? Uh, because sometimes when I'm reading, uh, when I'm reading security, the, the new face of security uh, in circumstances like, say, when open source intelligence, ISIN, or OSINT, is being used to to call intelligence information and quell security, unfortunate security circumstances. I just wonder, do our security operatives and, you know, and our security uh, chiefs, do they also use similar, similar infrastructure, especially when this infrastructure can be free and be easily gotten and collated? and can be used effectively to tackle some of the phenomena that are, that are averaging us. Is it me that is a bit uh, too distant from the reality of my environment, or I read too much uh, international magazines? You know, uh, during security, situations are entangled in politics. And there are a lot of speculations until we get to that day, then we are able to see 
the exact security deployment and arrangement that have been made to curtail it. Because obviously the intelligence that is on ground to curtail the situation tomorrow will not be revealed to you because that is how intelligence are operated. But we saw in this situation during a number of elections where elections were threatened that they would not hold an XYZ. But we all stayed in this country and saw a peaceful election and a very credible election. And that is why, from the outset, I told you that we are optimistic on the basis of what we saw in other offshoring elections in this country. And that is why we are hoping that we are going to achieve the same results. We are hoping that we are going to get the same cooperation that we are going to get uh, from the citizens, so that we will all together with the security agencies be able to have a peaceful and credible election. So, if I if I can re I can reasonably deduce from your last point that it is also equally important that the citizen, that is the human intelligence element too, that the citizens engage the security agencies with a view to protecting them effectively. Exactly. Because the peace of every election lies with the citizen. Especially the politician, because the politician has always out there to use every antics to win elections. And that is why security situations, when they are entangled with politics, they become so complex. Then, like I told you, all previous elections in Nigeria have tended to be more credible and peaceful than the general election. So we are optimistic that we are going to achieve the same result now, and hoping that nothing will come. But the deployment we are seeing also, we expect that they should be able to be on top of the situation and control things so that we can be able to act. Uh, <laughs> And uh, not to. Hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, about three or four days ago, there was this unfortunate uh, situation in Kogi when about three lives were snuffed out. Um, I, 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 we just hope that some, something dastardly like that will not repeat itself before, during, and after these elections. But people like you in the security, in the intelligence and security community must be a bit disturbed that the electioneering campaigns ultimately led to the death of, uh, of persons. What's the take of that? The situation in Kogi is not a situation that uh, we can jump into conclusions because when the investigation was carried out, it was still concluded. It was still concluded that it was political antics, but it wasn't the race situation that was on ground. Uh, and so, because in the end, the investigation did not achieve any arrest. The investigation did not uh, achieve any anything to rely on and move on to as a threat. And so that's why we are saying that all those things are political answers. So uh, the, the politicians are the most volatile uh, and the most, um, the most uh, I, I really want to choose my words carefully, but the politicians from what I've I've been hearing you say maybe the weakest link of the security security value chain for people like you who are security professionals. No, there are committees on ground and already our, our men are also on ground to monitor the situation. And what I'm telling you are intelligence that we have gathered from the field. Uh, and if there was something that was a threat to the election, we would have obviously informed you that this is the threat we have. As we speak this evening, we are not threatening any of the threats to the election. And so if any threat comes, as the, as the election goes by, we are going to see it from Nigeria. But for now, the deployment has been peaceful. All materials have moved to the respective local government. Those sensitive and not sensitive materials 
And so, by every standard, we are already having success in the election where materials are more successful. There is no crisis, there is no skimishing. So, uh, yes, in any of the three states. And so, uh, we don't need to preempt crisis when we are not seeing it yet. We are, we are on ground, we are monitoring, and we are going to monitor until elections are now successful. But but in your but in your in your line of business uh, and in your line of uh, uh, specialty, uh, it, it is always not over until it's over. You people are perpetually uh, are on alert. That's why I say we are monitoring until elections are announced. And you are also very confident that uh, the elections in the free states will will happen and happen successfully. We are not confident, we are optimistic. We are optimistic, okay. We are optimistic the, the, from what we have seen in Anambra, in Oshun. And so we have said that this being an OCR election, the deployment will be able to give us the results we have in those two states. That is why we are optimistic. We can be confident on what we are not doing ourselves. Uh, the security uh, operatives are the one doing mobilizations. And all of that. But if you have any word of advice in closing now, if you have any any word of advice for uh, citizens in those three states who uh, may want to uh, perform their civic duty, uh, what would be your word of word of advice to them before and during the uh, on on the very day of the ballot? Well, fundamentally, the, the security of the elections depends on the security. It is our conduct that will bring peace and credibility to elections. And so, people have come out, people have campaigned, people have informed them of their manifestos, and they also live with the people, they know them. And so, they should be able to go out and select the people they want, and the security should be on top of the situation to make sure that the choice of the people is who is going to be announced to the governors in Kogi, in Bayelsa, and in Timo. The voice of the people should count. And whatever duties we have, we are going to be updating, we are going to be working closely with you people, and we are going to be updating Nigerians as the days go by. Terence Quernum, security expert and public affairs commentator, we say thank you. Thank you for reaching... Thank you. Mm-hmm.